The Meaning of Maggie, Chapter 6. Dad's fall led to more fall, but of the autumn variety. The leaves turned and the temperatures dropped, and some other stuff happened that wasn't really important. Because when it was Halloween, Halloween, the single best day of the year, the day I would make a national holiday once I was president. Schools would be closed, but banks would stay open. Instead of money, they would hand out buckets and buckets of candy. Wow. There's a presidential campaign we can get behind. Layla and Tiffany were both home on Halloween night, which was weird because they should have been at parties dressed up as hotter versions of themselves. But Halloween was on a school night and mom never allowed hotness on school nights. That's a good rule. So they stayed in and helped me get ready for trick-or-treating. They tried. Ooh, footnote. What, I'm still a kid. I can trick-or-treat. There's nothing wrong with it. They tried to convince me to be a ton of things involving makeup, high heels and tight dresses. But I opted for an homage to one of my heroes, Albert Einstein. Layla teased my hair into a tizzy and Tiffany sprayed it with white with Halloween hair dye. We used dad as a model for my mustache and Layla penciled in the perfect whiskers with eyeliners. I made a bow tie out of the scarf, put on a sweater and ta-da, I was a genius. I was so excited to hit the streets, but for some reason, dad wasn't feeling great. Probably because I told him I wouldn't share any candy with him, which was only 90% true because I'd give him all of my Smarties because I hated Smarties because they're like fake candy. Anyway, I begged him to go with me because he'd never been with me and mom, was stuck at work and kids who trick or treat alone get kidnapped. Okay, I'll go but I don't have a costume. That's when I had the best idea ever. I found a stack of black and gray construction paper and started cutting. I cut out a few big boulders and scotch taped them onto a shirt. Ta-da, let's hit the streets. Wait, what am I? I tapped the wheel on his chairs. You're the Rolling Stones. Ooh, music group. Ah, that's pretty cool. He laughed and we rolled out the door. Layla and Tiffany joined us halfway up the driveway in their last minute costumes. Layla wore a sweatshirt with the neck cut out and said she was an aerobics instructor. And Tiffany wore a sweatshirt with the neck cut out and she said she was a punk rocker. Whatever, all that mattered was that they were there and we were together and they could take over pushing dad uphill because my arms were about to break off. We knocked on all kinds of doors and every time I explained dad's costume, I got a big laugh and an extra handful of candy, which made me think I should bring this guy everywhere. On our way down the hill, Layla and Tiffany headed back home early because they had eaten too much candy. And by too much, I mean three candy corn. I was sharing a Twix with dad when I heard someone shout my name and that someone was an angel sent straight from heaven even though he was dressed as a zombie sent from the other place. It was Clyde. My knees buckled as Clyde walked his bike over to dad and me. I thought that was you. You look great. Albert Einstein, right? God, we had so much in common. <laughs> I also thought I looked great. <laughs> yeah, Albert Einstein, I love him. Well, not like that. I don't love him. We'd just be friends if he were alive. Nothing more. So what are you, a zombie? Dad answered before Clyde could. You're a zombie buddy Holly, right? Clyde's face lit up. You're the only one who's gotten my costume all night. Really? The black glasses make you a dead ringer. Dad nudged me. Get it, dead ringer? I wanted to disappear. I couldn't believe that dad would humiliate me at this critical moment in my relationship with Clyde. But Clyde laughed, so I laughed too. I tried to get my brother to be the big bopper, but he just wanted to be James Bond. Sean Connery, right? Or Sean Connery, James Bond, right? Dad asked. Clyde smiled. Yeah, because he had the coolest cars. Clyde nodded. Exactly. Well, I better go. My mom will kill me if I'm late for dinner. That's impossible, I pointed, pointed out. You're already dead. Ah, I guess you're right, Clyde laughed but I don't want to chance it. He got on his bike. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Mayfield. See you at school, Maggie. And then he rode away into the moonlight. 
Dad unlocked his wheels and turned toward me. So, that's Clyde? That's Clyde, I sighed with my whole heart in my throat. Ooh, you're right. He's, he is really cool. And he thinks you look great. <laughs> I know. When we got home, mom already had dinner ready and I pulled on my PJs but left my hair crazy because it was hilarious. Dad wheeled himself over to the stereo and put on sticky fingers by the Rolling Stones and the house lit up with brown sugar. We took our seats and I blessed the Lord for these, our gifts of spaghetti and meatballs. And then dad dropped his fork. No big deal, right? His, finger, his fingers were probably still sticky from the Snickers we snuck before dinner. Footnote. 23. In fact, maybe the Rolling Stones were in a similar predicament when they named the album. Ah, candy, sticky fingers, got it. He picked his fork up again, guided it, it to his noodles, lifted it to his mouth, and then dropped it all over his cream t-shirt. Now, Eric Clapton was eating dad's spaghetti. Eric Clapton is the singer of the band Cream. His next attempt was more determined, more focused. He gripped the handle of the fork with his whole hand. 24. Holding a fork like this is totally against the laws of mom, but it felt wrong to call him out on it right then. His whole hand scooped and lifted again. The whole bite dropped into his lap. Layla and I locked eyes with our plates while I sank into my scarf. I don't know why I just felt weird. Or I just felt weird. Dad took a deep breath. No one eats until I can. Really? Really? This was serious. The house was silent except for the murmur of Mick Jagger singing about wild horses. A million butterflies took off in my stomach. We put our forks to sleep on beds of asparagus and watched his dad try it again. But this time, when he dropped the fork, he dropped his head to his chest too. Mom sprang up. Let's get some fresh air, okay? She wheeled dad into the garage. Layla, Tiffany, and I kept our eyes down and we waited. We waited and waited and waited. On minute 10 of waiting, I picked up my fork and went for a bite. Layla threw her napkin at me. Stop it, you heard dad. My stomach growled like it was sticking up for me. But I'm starving, emphasis on starving. Tiffany grabbed my fork from my hand. How can you even be starving? I saw you scarf that Snickers before dinner. I grabbed my fork back. It was a mini Snickers and mom would want us to eat. What's the big deal anyway? I drop my fork all the time. It's a huge deal, Tiffany yelled. Why? Before Tiffany could let me have it, Layla interrupted. Stop it, Tiffany. Hold on, people. Did everyone know something I didn't? What's going on? Before they could answer, the door opened and mom rolled dad back inside. Their eyes were red and dad had a smear of lipstick on his cheek. Mom stacked the still full plates on top of each other inside. Who wants ice cream for dinner? I had no idea what was going on, but I did know one thing. I definitely wanted ice cream for dinner. Mom scooped chocolate almond ice cream into mugs and passed them around the table. She took a bite from her cup and spooned a scoop into dad's mouth while the record needle softly skipped, reminding us that there was a second side of sticky fingers that we needed that needed to be heard. I stirred my ice cream into a milkshake, drank it down and let myself slip into a sugar coma, trying to forget the fork, the weird, and the butterflies. The next day I swore I'd get to the bottom of whatever it was that everyone else knew and I didn't. But when I woke up, I had a mustache on my neck, cheeks and eyelids and took a while to scrub off. And then I had to get to school and I couldn't think about it there because I only think about school at school because there's just so much to think about at school. And then I got home. I was preoccupied with my trick-or-treating loot Inspecting every single piece for poison took time and precision, but I finally finished and decided to take dad a boatload of unpoisonous Smarties. 
I tiptoed into the living room because it felt like we should still be tiptoeing both literally and metaphorically. The night before still rumbled weird in my belly. Well, it could have been the sweet tarts rumbling weird in there too, but I was pretty sure it was just residual weird from what happened at dinner. So I decided it might be best if my mission to deliver Smarties to dad was as covert as possible. I walked up behind his chair so he couldn't see me and slowly stacked them on his table. Then I started moonwalking back to my room. Hey, Albert, busted. Why don't you unroll me a couple sleeves? I gave up my cover and turned back. It's just Maggie. Albert is nevermore. Wouldn't that be Edgar? Ooh, footnote 25. Sometimes I forget about how smart dad is, probably because he always promotes himself as good looking first, brilliant second. Hmm. Dad winked. I piled a bunch of Smarties into a napkin and ate one. Footnote 26. Nope, still tasted fake. Maybe I'll be Edgar Allan Poe next year. Suddenly, I was really excited. Want to be my raven? His face lit up, but only dimly. Hmm, maybe. Whatever I, I turned to leave, he called me back. Hey, Mags, check out this Whopper. What? Did you steal my Whoppers? 27 the candy that rivals any other in originality, crunch, and overall deliciousness. Ooh, I do like a Whopper. No, geez, I'm talking about the bruise on my foot. I looked down, a light purple bruise covered his entire foot. It was impressive as far as bruises go, and I knew a lot about bruises. I was covered in them. That's nothing. Look at this one on my arm. I rolled up my sleeve and presented a black orb above my elbow. I looked back at his foot. How'd you get it? Drop the shaving cream. What about you? Ran into the pantry door. He cracked up. But the pantry's always in the same place. I don't know. It snuck up on me. He was seeming more and more like a cool dude dad from before. More like a cool dude dad who would tell me anything. Hey, dad. Is um everything okay? Hmm. Is everything okay? He rolled the Smarties back and forth on the table and then threw three into his mouth. Well, one thing happened last night, one huge thing that changes everything. He paused and I held my breath. Last night, Clyde realized you are the coolest girl that there ever was. I blushed and smiled and gathered up every last wrapper to throw away in the trash outside so mom wouldn't know. I'd exceeded her two pieces of candy a day limit by 10 pieces. The rumbling weird in my belly was replaced by a rumbling ache, but it wasn't because I was scared. It was because I ate five Whoppers and a Crunch Bar and maybe a candy corner three. It definitely wasn't because I was scared.